BioBalance HealthCast Episode 197, Proactive Responsibility for Healthcare Decisions. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Dr. Maupin and I are going to continue a conversation on camera that we've been having off camera. I was talking to Kathy about uh, being a professional counselor for 30 years and seeing a lot of different clients with a lot of different issues. And that one of the things that struck me continually in that process is how, how often people have accidental lives. They just sort of drift through life and things happen to them. And most of their coping strategies are around a sort of reflexive survival skills. You know, something happens and you have to figure out, what am I going to do? This happened. Uh, and so we start talking about making proactive choices, recognizing, and one of the things I used to say to clients all the time is doing nothing at all is making a choice. Right. And they don't want to accept the responsibility for that. I, I didn't make a choice. It just happened. It happened to me. Yeah. It was, yeah, it it just was an act of I don't know why. It was lightning. Right. <laughs> and, and so I would try to convince them that you're making a choice. So let's examine the matrix, you know, behind the choice. Right. Uh, and actually, I, I regularly would quote Thomas Jefferson in the yes. Declaration of Independence. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was talking about formulating a new government at the time and forming revolution against the King of England. Mm -hmm. But what he said was, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. In so in other, other words, words to, to do something new mm -hmm. requires a proactive effort. And most of us drift along and endure and survive as best we can until that becomes totally disruptive and intolerable. But it's painful. It is to, painful. It's and it's painful scary. to change your life. It's painful. It's, it's, a, it's actual, not physical pain, mm -hmm. but it's emotional pain, and it takes work mm -hmm. to change your life. And if there's something out there that you're going for, say, say it's money or health or security, then you have to change. Or a better what, relationship. Or better relationship. <laughs> yeah. You have to do... You have to do work, and it's harder, and you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. And so that takes effort. And that effort is something that we don't always want to do. It's easier to sit still than it is to move yeah. and to do something new. And I, I mean, I know that that is, that is one of the things that keeps people right. from trying to replace their hormones knowing you know that you're going to get old. You know that we're all getting older. You know that you're going to have something, some side effect of being old. You're going to have osteoporosis. We're all going to have sarcopenia where we lose all our muscles and can't walk and end up in a wheelchair. Dementia, Alzheimer's. We're, yeah, dementia or in, inability to think well, even mm -hmm. if it's not dementia, inability to remember, um, inability to have sex or mm -hmm. not no desire to have sex, which damages our relationships. Um, no sleep makes us fatigued and loss of motivation. All of those are things that we can avoid if we take proactive steps. If but we that take takes proactive work. steps. I was laughing because I remember when my dad was in the hospital dying and he spent probably the last seven months of his life in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd go visit him and all of his older friends would come to visit him. And all of these men sitting around in the hospital room to chat with my dad, all they could talk about was, did you have a bowel movement today? Please, God, don't let that be me. I mean, <laughs> it shouldn't be any of you. <laughs> yeah. And so they were conversing with each other about, you know, what was the quality? What was the ease? How much was the difficulty? Uh, what's the frequency? Did you walk out? Oh, I, I would have walked guess. out. It was like, I can't we talk about anything else? You're looking but into the future. That was the, that was the <laughs> limit of their event horizon, you know. And that... None of us, or I don't think any of us, wants that to be our oh my end, God. No. or our, or no. And that makes, at this point in our lives, that still makes me. I mean, I'm almost sixty, and I still look at that and say, oh, "That yeah. can't be me in twenty right. years. Right. That can't be, and it won't be because I see, I can see the progression of things mm -hmm. because of what I do every day. I can see what is, what changes occur as we age, and what we can prevent." Right. We're still going to get older. We're still going to die someday. But we don't have to become decrepit and get illnesses and become obese and become inactive. That's not 
necessary. Well, but you have to get out of your comfort zone. And you deal with this every day when people come in to talk to you about, uh, is this a good choice? I mean, these are the Mm -hmm. people that have proactively gotten themselves to your office. Right. And we've also dealt with it. We've written this book, uh, The Secret Female Hormone, which is about testosterone for women, but Mm -hmm. also the information applies to men. Mm -hmm. And, And it's a discussion about the, the different elements of making that decision. Is this something that would be good for me? Uh, and if I haven't done it, why have I not done it? Or why am mm-hmm. I not considering it? And so we've had a lot of conversations with people and listened to things that they had to say about why they are not there yet mm-hmm. uh, and, and whether or not they think they will ever get there. And so we pulled together uh, 10 or 11 of those statements, and we thought we'd kind of talk through some of those. Some in of these I don't even today. get in my office. These yeah. are things that I get at dinner parties or at church or at, you know, at family gatherings. Mm-hmm. And one of, the, one of the most common ones is, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with well, me. That's, what, that's the ver- first one is it's hard to imagine yourself in a situation that you're not in. You know, right. So if I'm not crippled, if I don't have aches and pains, if I don't have uh, – an absence of a sex drive, then it's hard to imagine that that will ever happen to me. But if you do, you may not even think about it. Yes. You may not know that there. you may have subliminated all of those thoughts and feelings. And you to protect yourself, you say, I'm fine. Yet, if you look at each one of those symptoms, you have them. And that's the beginning of testosterone loss. And if it's not taken care of, then you'll get more devastating illnesses. It's, it's like glacial drift. I mean, and, and one of the best <laughs> slow, examples. Slow, but not that slow. <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but one of the best examples is the loss of sex drive and libido, mm-hmm. especially for women who still have children at home, who are trying to run a business, mm-hmm. run a household, take care of a husband and a relationship. And they, they keep reassessing their to-do list. And having sex mm-hmm. goes to the bottom line. It gets to be more important to fix Joey's lunch for tomorrow, and Sarah has a soccer match, and I've got to make sure she has a ride home from that, and I've got to mop the kitchen and do the laundry because we're having company this weekend and plan meals for. And and so that can happen even if you have a sex drive, but it can. But But if you have a sex drive, at least your sex drive will occasionally intrude and be like, "Doggone it!" You know. But for a lot of people, it gets pushed back, and and then they come to see me or they come to see you, and they're saying like, "You know, I realized that." My husband's complaining constantly. I haven't wanted to have sex for the last three months. And we used to have sex twice a day. Uh, it's like, well. Before the kids. There, and there's then a, once a day after. Perhaps something going on. Yes. Know, let's talk about that. Right. And then let's let's see if you're well. And they won't say, oh, I'm just busy. I'm just stressed. Uh, it's some other. It's probably partly that. Mm-hmm. And it's partly that they're, everybody is overbooked. You have to pull back a little bit and get rid of the things that you don't need. But. It's usually, if you're over 40, it's usually lack of testosterone. Well, I just always tell them what Cary Grant used to say. Cary Grant said, sex is the best form of exercise. And everybody wants to lose weight, so that helps. (laughs) (laughs) You can burn off some calories. So my next next, um, reason for patients not to want to embrace this, besides not seeing that they need it, is the next is that they say, well... My doctor said he's never heard of this, and there's no research on it, and there's there's this isn't a good treatment. Well, that's not true. My doctor First didn't all, say that. My doctor said Kathy Maupin is the reason my teenagers are still alive. <laughs> <laughs> that's because she's embraced it. <laughs> but a lot of doctors out there have not embraced it. And they haven't read about it. And it's easy to say there's no research if you never look, if you... If right. you never look for something, then of course there's no research. But there's tons of research about testosterone for both men and women and right. how good it is and how important it is as we age th- to avoid the diseases of aging. And research about the positive qualities of it. There are frightening things that are out there that, that the true. facts don't support. Right. And and right now, currently, I mean, you see lawyers all over the television saying, come join our, our class action suit. Uh, if you've ever driven by a drugstore that had testosterone in it, yeah, and there's no data. They, they quote one study mm-hmm. that was done in a veterans hospital with veterans that were over 60 who already had heart conditions with a, with a history of a stroke yeah. or a heart attack. And they said it caused stroke. An increase in that the, more of them had it after they took testosterone. It's like, well, but more than we're going to have them anyway. <laughs> because they had heart disease in the situation they were in. It wasn't the and testosterone. And they're over 60, and they're the war cause. veterans. And, they're, and They've had a hard life. Yeah. So 
those those exclamation points in the middle of your uh, gathering of information are exclamation points that really aren't true. You have to go to the to the data. We have it on our on my website. Biobalance Health uh, has uh, a resources area. You can look up the different articles, the medical articles that talk positively about testosterone for women for many all the different um, men and men. And men. Um, all, all the, the different symptoms. They usually do a study on testosterone and blank testosterone and blank like libido, testosterone and muscle mass, testosterone and diabetes. And so all of those, you have to look at multiple studies to see the benefit that testosterone can give you. And the only testosterone that in that in those studies show a problem uh, is oral, which we don't even have or use anymore. Right. And that was, that was a bad experiment. The FDA pr actually passed that mm -hmm. oral for women, and we don't use that anymore. It was called EstroTest. So that's that's where most of the side effects that are discussed mm -hmm. come from. And that's what the doctors may be thinking of. But they should go to the research that we have, and you can go to it yourself and look up those articles. Well, and another thing that becomes a challenge for us socially, because we're social animals mm -hmm. and, and we want to fit in, and, and we have sort of an innate tendency, most of us, to play hardball. We want to be in with the, the group. group. yeah. And so when you are asked the question, well, do you want to think about trying this? It's kind of a new thing. More and more people are learning to do it, but it's not common yet. Mm -hmm. uh, is they want to, they're reluctant to be on the cutting edge. And yeah. they, they will say, well, none of my friends do it. I don't want to be laughed at. I don't want to be pointed to. Well, as that's, a and person. your friends will say, because women in, t in general. They'll say, well, why are you doing that? Right. That's women, ridiculous. Women will first say, oh, you look good. Did you get a facelift? Did you lose weight? What happened? And it's their testosterone. And then they tell them what it is and they go, oh my God, that's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. They don't have any data. No, and because all they read are the headlines. Or. And the headlines scream. All they listen to is their, you yeah. know, 65 year old doctor who's not read anything in a few years. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, all of this not stuff. Not that we're critical. No, not that I'm critical. Yeah. But it, it's important to actually investigate something before you dismiss mm -hmm. it. And people will take on, well, my doctor said this and my doctor said that. And I'm like, that's fine. Every doctor has an opinion. But. Here are, here are the facts, and this is what I'm basing my treatment on. Mm -hmm. And it's been 12 years, and we've done awesome. Another element in the decision-making that causes some women concern is the fact that it's not an authorized treatment for women. It's not approved mm -hmm. by the FDA. Mm -hmm. uh, and they say, well, there must be something wrong with that. It must be illegal. Yeah, and I don't want to do anything that's, that's stodgy. And part of the thinking around that is money because – most of our generation of people grew up in a historical time where they had health insurance that paid the bills. Mm -hmm. And you go see the doctor and you might pay a copay, but, but when I was younger, you didn't even do that. They just signed a document and, and the insurance paid the bill. Insurance won't pay for this. Other mm -hmm. other than for Actually, when I some, grew up, we paid for all of our <laughs> you, well, our visits. We paid cash for all of our visits. We were there, was no, there was no copay. There was no free care. There, we paid for everything. Uh -huh. So they, that hadn't happened yet. Well, that mindset has changed mm -hmm. now. And people expect that the insurance company will take care of it. And if it doesn't take care of it, then they reconsider. They, may, say, they think oh, it may not be a good treatment. Mm -hmm. that, but the insurance company is always looking for a way out of treatment of paying for something because they're a business, they're not a doctor and they're not a nurse. They're they're health management, but really they're money management. That's money, really that's what right. they're, they're not there in the business for. of paying your bills. They're so, in the business of keeping the money. So if something's not approved by the FDA, they use that as an excuse. And the reason it's not is because testosterone is a generic. Mm -hmm. It has basically been used for so long that no one can patent it. No one could put it through the FDA unless they do something like put a patch on it that they patent. Mm -hmm. They can patent the patch, but not the testosterone itself. Mm -hmm. So it's something they can't, that people can't make money on unless they have a gadget or a gizmo that they can they can actually so use to get yeah. through the FDA. But but we've been, um, they've been unsuccessful in getting that through for women. And that, that has been one of the reasons women think it's not their hormone. There's all kinds of excuses out there, but truly, we have three times as much testosterone as estrogen. You've heard us say that before. So we need it back, and it's just as important for us as men. Well, and culturally, women 
are not educated to, to know or understand that testosterone is a female hormone. I remember a few years back when my wife and I had a couple of uh, engineering students living with us from France. And we, the three of us guys would be sitting out on the deck when she'd mm -hmm. come home, you know, wait for her to come home and feed us. And she would come in and go, ah, smell the testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have 10 times as much as we do. We so. do. Uh, but, but, but we still need it. Culturally, it's assigned a male value. It's right. a man's hormone. But what we are trying to do is re-educate the world and say, you know what? It's a female's hormone. That's Every right. bit as much. You, you right. have the same need for it and the same reason for it, just not the need for the same volume of it. True. And that's very true. And that's why many women say, oh, I'm not doing that. That's a guy's hormone. Mm -hmm. And that is and that is based on nothing. Well, yeah. That is if based I, on If I take a male hormone, my voice will drop. I'll get big muscles in my shoulders like and that. arms. And I'll get a beard. You know? We have completely different receptors even. <laughs> we have it does it does some different things in us, but in terms of preventing disease, it does the same things. Yeah. So those and, and it builds muscle mass and loses fat. So what's wrong with that? Well, coming back to the ability to focus uh, in, in counseling, one of the things that I regularly say is let's pull back and look at the big picture. Let's look for the pattern. And what we found in talking to patients who are considering, mm -hmm. should I get this or not, is they have a, a tendency to myopically focus. It's like going to the art museum and looking at a pointless uh pointillism picture mm -hmm. and from far back you can see the picture but up close all you see are these little bitty individual right. dots and so what tends to happen is that people focus on a symptom and they don't see that symptom as part of a pattern and so they don't consider a patterned response they right. consider a treatment for that individual symptom that's I what get we wanted headaches. to accomplish with the fe with the uh, secret female hormone right we wanted we wanted to show all the symptoms that are related to one hormone mm -hmm. and not have what medicine does with symptoms nowadays is treat each symptom separately with a different with a drug. different medicine and a different doctor's office and a different visit and a different cost so if you add all of those up over a say a six month period mm -hmm. and get a total what have I spent on medicines and doctors visits in the last six months and you compare that to the cost of testosterone replacement mm-hmm and it's almost always a big savings yeah, it, for you it, to it, replace your testosterone. It generally is. I mean, the ma the many things that, I mean, it can, uh, if you see a doctor for pre-diabetes diet or early diabetes, yes. we can, we make, this testosterone makes you more insulin sensitive and it makes you lose fat and it makes you gain muscle, which decreases your your uh, chance of getting diabetes and pulls you away from that diabetic diagnosis, which is going to save you tons of time and money and you may not need your diabetologist there's it's hard to even get a, an appointment with an endocrinologist because there's so many people with diabetes you don't want to becoming have that. an epidemic in america today it for is all kinds of reasons uh, right the food and, systems the exercise systems. And because we don't exercise and we drive everywhere mm -hmm. and that's that's huge but we also um Exercise actually in our earlier years stimulates testosterone. So from a very early stage, we're not exercising enough. And then when we get to the point where we're not making as much from our ovaries, exercise doesn't always help. Right. So then we need to replace it. I see people at the gym and they're my patients, but I can't say that. Right. And I'll have people come up to me and talk to me about testosterone and go, oh, I'm not going to do that because look at all these guys in here. They look great and they're over 60 or over 50. And I'm like, I can't say anything. They're taking testosterone. I'm their doctor. Right. And so I'm like, well, sometimes you just don't know. Yep, sometimes you just and don't know. And that's all I can say because legally I can't say that. Well, there are ethical say. standards that limit what Absolutely. Say. So I can't, I can't say that. Yeah. But it just kills me not to be able to go, they're using testosterone. That's why they look so good because it's hard to build muscle. I mean, if you really want to have good muscle that burns calories and keeps you upright and keeps you healthy mm -hmm. and allows you to do the exercise you've always done, then, you know, you can, you have to exercise still, but it won't build muscle after you've, you're out of testosterone. You just lose it. Right. So you just get smaller and smaller and smaller and have more sa sagging skin. Also, there's... There's a huge movement in the United States for natural remedies and mm -hmm. herbal remedies mm -hmm. and not getting prescription mm -hmm. medicines. And you can't get testosterone without a doctor's prescription. Right. But people think they can because the herb says testosterone or this formulation says testosterone and right in front of it says stimulates or 
acts like or it has the fine print fine you have to print. look yeah. at, but it's not testosterone. And I, I had this a circumstance when I was talking. I told you I had an, a younger couple talk to me about, oh, well, we're taking this blank, supplement. supplement. Right. That has um, that has testosterone in it, and it's helped our sex life. And I'm thinking, well, first of all, if you take a supplement that does stimulate testosterone, and you're young, then there's, there's some there to stimulate. Then, then the testicles and ovaries can be stimulated. But if you're older, they're not stimulatable. Mm-hmm. They 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 just aren't going to increase their output. So so for a young person, yeah, that may increase their testosterone a little bit. They didn't do tests; it could have been placebo effect, and they admitted that. But but it made them feel better because mm-hmm. they're taking taking the supplement. But if you get old, if you're older and do that same thing, it would be the placebo effect because it's not going to be giving you a sex drive just because you're taking the su- a supplement. So a lot of what we've been talking about today are the, the conversations that we have and the comments that we receive from people who are saying, I'm not ready to make this decision or I'm mm-hmm. making the decision not to do this, mm-hmm. even though I'm aging and even though I have these issues. So we thought it would be worthwhile to spend some time going through a, a, a suggested uh kind of like a Ben Franklin close. When, when I was in sales training many, many years ago, they taught us about something called the Ben Franklin close, which is you make a, you, you tell the mark, the customer, just Mr. <laughs> the Prospect. Uh, I don't know that. that whenever Ben Franklin had a decision to make that was a difficult decision, he would take a sheet of paper mm-hmm. and he'd divide it in half and he'd put pro and con. I've always done that. I didn't and, know that was so, his. So let's go through the, the list and think of all the reasons for doing my product. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, as the professional trained on this, as mm-hmm. I know all the reasons. For, so I help you. I'm a, well, there's this reason, and mm-hmm. there's this reason, and there's this reason. And you write them all down. It's like 10, 15 reasons. Mm-hmm. And then you say, now let's think of all the reasons why you might not want to mm-hmm. buy my product. And then I shut up because you're going to come up with two or three, mm-hmm. and that's going to be the list. And then visually, you got 15, 4, and 3 against. It helps persuade you. So okay. we're going to do that for you. <laughs> we're going to do that to you. <laughs> On our next you. podcast, we're going to give you 12 or 15 reasons why you ought to do this. You come up with your own reasons <laughs> not to. So, as always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.